Good afternoon. I had the opportunity to interview director Anthony Baxter and producer Richard Finney at the Traverse City Film Festival on July 29, 2011. Their documentary was called You've Been Trumped and apparently a current conflict over building of Donald Trump's golf resort on a Scottish beachfront. And the surrounding community was angered at Donald Trump because of their location. Both in Scotland, uh, whereabouts in relation to the location and the movie do you live? Right, well, um, uh, we both live in a, I'm a Canadian originally, but I've lived in Britain for quite some time. This story wasn't being told in, 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 in a truthful way in, in the local media, the story of this development. And we, we kind of found that really, we went up there to, we heard, you know, we heard, we'd read about the developments and, and we were just, just wanted to know, get a, you know, know more about it really. And I think maybe be, to begin with, we were thinking maybe of doing, we we're kind of journalists by background, and, and you know, there might be a, you know, kind of more of a journalism story there. And so we went up and talked to the residents, uh, you know, most of the main characters you see in the film, and it was just immediately apparent, you know, that this not only was this a fascinating story, but this that nothing of the real, you know, the truth of the, of the story was really coming out. And uh, and Anthony was then and there, I think, decided that he would. He, you know, start to pursue the, the story. So it was basically filming over a, a kind of period of a year, uh, you know, kind of a glimpse of the uh, of the, the struggle between the, the local residents and um, and uh, Mr. Trump and the consequences on the natural world is, uh, uh, of this this struggle is, that takes place there. What political faction was behind Trump in Scotland to, to give him a carte blanche right. treatment? Well, the, the the current government of Scotland, the, Scotland has its own government uh, that has responsibilities that are somewhat different from the national United Kingdom government, and the and the current government, which is the the um, the, the Scottish National Party, which is a, a a separatist party actually, but it's a very it's a national, very much and strongly kind of pro Scotland uh, party. They're the ones who who gave Mr. Trump the green light, and not only gave him the green light, but had to overturn. A kind of planning process which had rejected the proposal as it was presented by by Mr. Trump. So uh, uh, they were they are the political uh, party that does have to take responsibility. So the majority for it. of the Scottish people put them in power. They did. They did. And uh, in fact, they were they've been re-elected with majority uh, just before our film came out. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, so yes, uh, it, so yes, it was very much the Scottish government uh, of the. All of the people of Scotland who, who supported the development, but you know, uh, certainly when people see the film, you know, we, we've had—I I don't think we've had anybody who's seen the film and come up to us and said, "I, I think that it was a good thing that Mr. Trump went ahead with the development." Uh, I'll say. What progress is the Trump project at this point? In time? Well, well, I mean, the golf course is 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 being built uh, fairly rapidly, and uh, they they claim that it might be finished next year. Uh, However, the rest of this quite large development of the hotel and, and uh, 450 uh, houses, luxury houses, uh, and another golf course has been stalled, stopped, actually, um, uh, apparently because of the economic downturn, uh, according to the Trump Organization. Uh, so whether that will, that will start again, we don't know. Uh, it, is, it is kind of ironic because initially the... You know, one of the reasons for supporting the development is that it was a it was a big development in a time of economic uncertainty. Well, <laughs> here we are in economic uncertainty, and now that's the reason for it not going ahead. So it's it actually it's it's um, you know uh, to think that that you know this wilderness area, one of the very last stretches of wilderness in Britain, could be ruined not only before a, a golf course, but 
on, on uh, because of a, 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 a so-called economic bonanza from a from a building project, and that building project doesn't even occur. I mean, it just uh, it becomes a really sad, sad story. I say. So the scientific community in Scotland mm -hmm. frowned on this project. Yeah, there really was no, there really were, were no, at least environmentalists, uh, scientists from the environmental side of things, that were in favor of it, despite. Mr. Trump's continual statements that they were supportive of him, it's just, it, it, it just isn't uh, true. How's Michael Forbes doing nowadays? Well, I mean, the, the film is very recent, uh, recently finished, so the way you see uh, Michael Forbes in there is very much how he is, I think, today, and his, his mother, uh, Molly, um, uh, and his wife, Sheila. Um, you know, I think he's, um, I think he's holding up. I, I mean, they're, they're all, you know, they, they're very strong people, as you see in the film, and, and they're, and they're, Determined, um, but that doesn't mean they're not, you know, strongly affected by the, you know, the, the uncertainty of what's going on, and also just the attacks they receive. You know, I mean, the you know the verbal attacks. You know, you see the kind of you know statements that Mr. Trump makes, and 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 they have an impact. I mean, it's you know maybe not for the people around them, but you know, people in Aberdeen or outside, you know, that people, a lot of people just assume there must be something to what Mr. Trump is saying. You know, and 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 so they're you know they're terrible. Personal attacks on on, on on Forbes in general, uh, and and but you know they're very they're very um, they have some they have thick skins but the, you know, no one's skin is that thick I think um, but I think the film is helping to it's helping I, I you know they have, they do have support from you know activists who, who try to come to their side to some extent and uh, and so I think the film it, 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 it I think they do feel the film shows what the reality is like. Uh, and I think I think that's been helpful. Uh, I hope it's been helpful, anyways. Um, and uh, you know, whether it's help, help, helpful down the road, we'll have to see. I guess. Is this your and Anthony's first documentary project? It's our first feature-length documentary. We've done uh, uh, other documentaries, sometimes news documentaries, you know, kind of shorter format uh, things, uh, also the radio documentaries. Um, so we have the, we've done, done a number of films in various parts of the world, but they've been shorter length, maybe half an hour or, or, or less. Uh, so this is our first feature length documentary. Do you have your eyes uh, on any other projects in the future? Well, I know Anthony, uh, the director, is, um, is planning uh, a film in Afghanistan, actually, as, as, an, as on a children's hospital in Afghanistan, with a bit of change of uh, uh, pace. But um, we have done quite a bit of filming in, in that part of the world, and so... Uh, uh, that is really the next project that's, um, you know, that's very much, uh, you know, in development. Um, uh, and the other others are, are just Will ideas at this point. Will you sharing in that project as well? I, I think so. Uh, you know, it, it depends on the, it, 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 we always, whenever we do a project together, we end up kind of figuring out how we, we share the responsibilities. Uh, what film festivals will it be coming? Right, well, the film uh, premiered at Hot Docs, which is a very large festival in Toronto in at the beginning of May, um, and then then appeared at the Sheffield uh, Documentary Festival in Britain, which is the United Kingdom's largest uh, uh, documentary festival. And so then we were just absolutely delighted to be here, you know, to be chosen here. It was a real uh, honor. And, you know, to see the films here, it's, it's really quite, you know, it's quite moving personally, I think, for Anthony and, my, and myself to be a part of the crowd, but, you know, the part of like, the, the filmmakers that are that are here, um, and so from here, we, the we are the film will go to the Hamptons Film Festival in, in uh, the Eastern Seaboard, and uh, and also down to Alabama, I think, and uh, uh, and a couple of film festivals in Britain, and we'll see from there. Richard, it's a fantastic documentary. Okay, well, thank you. And here comes the director, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anthony back. Do you want to get want to get in there? Yeah, just for a second, yeah, just for a second, yeah, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. Richard. Uh, yeah, no, thanks very much, I was so rude out there. Oh, you weren't. Oh, I, was just, I, was, I was just trying to, yeah, yeah, it was fine. I was, well, know, was, your, happy, I was yeah, having but, an enjoyable oh, conversation yeah, with your counterpart yeah, right here. Yeah, Richard said that this is your first feature documentary. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's the first feature documentary we've made. I mean, Richard and I have made films you know, around the world together. And, Short, short Some time. pretty yeah. difficult places, but we never expected, in some respects, you know, we've filmed in Afghanistan, Pakistan, places like that together, and we never thought we'd be 
dealing with a situation where I was arrested and both of us were arrested and put in prison cells. You never know. No, in Scotland. <laughs> so you're never expecting that to happen, obviously. You know, so, so it's quite an extraordinary journey, really. Quite a, a story that I think um, resonates with people around the world because everybody has you know, these stories where there are developers trying to um, change and build upon sensitive, sensitive environmental areas on their, in their backyard. You know, and this is a story I think that we all have in some respects in communities all over the world. Do you see that this is a trend that's building in, in not only Scotland but on, uh, on, the, on Europe, uh, throughout Europe, where uh, interest uh, from uh, billionaires like Trump are, are trying to do the very same thing elsewhere? Well, I mean, I think there's a, there are other films here at the festival that show similar kind of parallels. Battle for Brooklyn, for example, is a story where a developer comes in and wants to build skyscrapers and a basketball stadium in Brooklyn. And that's a, a billionaire developer, a mogul with you know, power and influence doing a similar kind of thing. In Europe, I think there are bound to be cases similar. I don't actually know of the details of them, but I mean, there are, uh, I think, wherever you go in the world, I did see Battle for Brooklyn in, in Brooklyn, and there was a French woman there at the screening who was saying, oh, I'd like to show this film because it really does resonate with the situation we have locally. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's very much the case all over Europe and the wider world, you know, where people are trying to balance uh, development against the environmental challenges that we all face. Mm -hmm. Richard had commented that the uh, government that's in power right now, that the vast majority of Scotland put them in power, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, the few people that, uh, like Michael Forbes, and I, I can't I remember the woman, mm, the, woman yeah. the elderly woman. Yeah, Molly, that's his mother, Molly, yeah. How many, how many people are being affected? How many uh, uh, citizens are being affected by this Trump project? Well, the Trump project doesn't affect a huge number of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, he mm -hmm. essentially purchased hundreds of acres of land, and there are several houses, several residents who live in the footprint of that land, but essentially he's decided to build the golf resort around those houses. Mm -hmm. And so, in essence, it's a, very, it's a small group of people, but these are people who feel very passionately about the environment in which they live. They feel passionately about the grounds, the, the land that they live on, they've raised their families mm -hmm. on in some cases, and they feel a real sensitive attachment to the environment. Mm -hmm. And so although it's not a huge number of people, it's a very committed group of people who I think this whole business has, has brought them closer together and, and made them realize in a way uh, how as a community it, it's, it's, quite, it, it's quite affecting. And, mm -hmm. You know, they've, they, they have, I think, become unlikely environmentalists. They never set out to fight for the environment, really. I mean, they just lo love the area and they feel very passionate about it. And they know it very well as well because they've, they've seen it move and shift and change over, over decades mm -hmm. and generations in some cases. You know, it, it just seems to me that with such uh, uh, so few people being affected, and the, the vast majority of Scotland, like uh, a lot of people, really weren't really aware of the situation that was taking place right there. So uh, there's a real horrible lack of sympathy for these people, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, I think when people see the film, I think they feel that they're in a position where they can make up their own minds for the first time. And, and our film is an attempt to try and get to the truth of this development and what's happened. And so I think, in a way, people feel that the film gives them the other side of the story. And, and there is a sense of sympathy and empathy uh, with the people who are at the direct front of this, this story, you know, the local residents. And, I mean, I've found when we've done screenings in other cities like Glasgow, Edinburgh and Aberdeen, the people who come to see the film, they have two responses really. One is they feel angry and let down by those in power, those in power, including the police, including the government. They feel that, that Trump, uh, the Trump organization has written 
roughshod over those those authorities, and they feel ignorant actually as to what's really been happening, and they feel angry as well with their local media. They don't feel their local media has been doing them a service, and they feel let down by that. And I think those are the kind of reactions that we're very much seeing when we show the film. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's a very similar thing going on in our own country. I'm sure you're aware of uh, Medicare being, uh, um, you know. Uh, onslaughted on, along with other uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, social institutions within the country and whatnot. So it just really rings very, very similar to what uh, Trump uh, is doing as father right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I think there are, you know, there are parallels in all kinds of front of the story with the, the you know, stories that you just mentioned. There's also the, um, the Rupert Murdoch story in our country, you know, where uh, Rupert Murdoch, has, um, uh, his newspapers have been accused of you know, not telling the truth in stories. And so here we have a, you know, a, and that's a, a media mogul with big power and influence over you know, the police and over the government and all these kind of things. And then here we have in this story you know, Donald Trump as a, as a um, tycoon and a property developer coming in and having influence. And, the people, I think, all over the world are asking questions, you know, about power and money and its influence over the way that we want to live our lives, and mm -hmm. they feel quite angry and let down and disappointed about them at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, Richard had commented that uh, your next uh, documentary will possibly take you to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Can you touch a little bit on that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think yeah, the next film I'd like to make is very different to this one. It's um, set in Afghanistan in Kabul around a children's hospital, but it's very much, I think, based on a similar kind of feeling that I have in terms of wanting to try and make these kind of films. Is that the, the, with the Trump film, I felt quite angry that the, the true story of um, this development wasn't coming out. And in Afghanistan, having made films with my colleague Richard there previously, you know, I felt that the truth hasn't really come out there sometimes with the local, with the people and the, and the people of Afghanistan I feel often we see some fantastic, and there is a fantastic film um, playing at this festival about, you know, the soldiers uh, working in Afghanistan on the, on the um, you know, front line in, the, in terms of uh, battling against IEDs and, and the, 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 the challenges they face. But, you know, the embedded journalist or filmmaker in, with soldiers is something that we're, we're kind of familiar with seeing in that particular film. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, really quite different. But the, but the point is, is that, you know, we're, I feel that the stories that have come out from Afghanistan haven't always told the truth or the, given the whole picture about the, the local people. They're not necessarily painted in that way. And, the film I'd like to make is set around a children's hospital in Kabul where there are Western medics working alongside their Afghan colleagues. And I'd like the film to try and get to know those, you know, the, the Western medicine uh, meeting ancient traditions to head on in that, in that hospital. And to get to know these people, these Afghan people and their children and, you know, the children who are the country's future. And so that's the film that I'd like to make next. Well, I wish you... Nothing but the best, oh. uh, Richard, on your next project. Oh, thanks very much. This was thank a terrific you. documentary. Oh, thank and, you very much. And uh, it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you and Richard. Oh, and you as well. Thanks a lot for having us there. I wish you well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank